Hello, and welcome to Inconsequential Gaming. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to do an update today on the progress of uh, Terraria Souls. Now, some of you who follow my channel are interested in the adventure map that I've been working on uh, that is currently titled Terraria Souls, which I'm not sure if that's the name that um, I'm going to use officially, but just for now, just for the sake of understanding, so people understand the direction that the project is going in, uh, it's just known as Terraria Souls. But uh, what I've been doing is trying to find a way to um, improve my PC equipment um, because I've been having like a lot of problems recording footage and um, you know doing standard tasks um, with it. So I'm gonna have to get an upgrade eventually. Uh, for now, though, uh, the project will still be underway. But with some of the um, new information coming out uh, with uh, Dark Souls 3, I want to try to incorporate as much of that influence into Terraria Souls as possible, or maybe even consider uh, making more adventure maps uh, based on, I guess, the, the things that I see there. Now, the cool thing about Terraria, though, is that you can always uh, redesign how a world is structured. But one of the difficulties I've been running into is trying to make the enemy types interesting. Uh, and it's not the fault of the game, uh, Terraria. Uh, a lot of the enemies are really cool and interesting in the game. It's just that a lot of enemies are biome specific. And uh, some of the enemies that would be appropriate for certain parts uh, of a Terraria Souls map don't appear <clears throat> until um, late game, like something like when you go to hard mode or, um, you know, they don't fight in a certain ferocious way until you do something like um, go to a hard world map. Now, the Terraria Souls map will be using uh, expert mode um, map. Uh, I apologize. I didn't even say hard mode map, but it will be using an expert mode map um, and trying to find a balance uh, with that for the adventure map uh, is one of the biggest challenges uh, that I've run into like and especially with the interest trying to make the enemies interesting because um, for the most part to get enemies to appear in certain areas um, you can't really use livable structures like what I mean is if you want to build a castle or some kind of ruin uh, there's a certain type of uh, background and brick that you have to use so that certain enemies appear uh, in that area and trying to find a balance between that and staying uh, visually true to uh, the map or you know to try to make it interesting consistently is one of the biggest challenges that I've kind of run into and you know I don't want to place the player in like an, dip, an area, uh, area that's too difficult too early <clears throat> and stuff like that uh, so yeah it's just the whole balancing act that seems to be the most difficulty that I've been having as of late um, and like when when you're building an adventure map uh, you run into unforeseen issues like one of the things I wanted to do was make uh, uh, safe houses that were similar to a bonfire where players could uh, save their progress um, but what would happen is when I make a safe house there's a limited amount of furniture that can be used before certain NPCs and all that will start showing up uh, and it's like it, it was difficult because I want to control how and when NPCs start to show up and you know foregoing uh, certain I guess visually pleasing structures and stuff uh, is also something that I had to consider so basically it's just me being nitpicky uh, which is what's taking most of the time is I really want the map to be engaging and really good like if I could make, I, I guess you would say, like, uh, as true 
to Dark Souls um, as you could possibly get in that pretty easily, but the question would be, would it be fun to play, you know? I don't want it just to be pretty to look at, I want the players to actually enjoy uh, exploring the map, you know, and being challenged, and I don't want the challenges to be redundant and the same thing over and over again, so... I don't know, there's a there's a lot of things like I'm even considering maybe some areas just don't need to be in the map, <clears throat> but that's something that I didn't want to do as well. So I don't know. I, I'm still thinking about stuff. Like uh, one solution I was thinking is if enemies become a little too redundant for me, what I might do is just kind of compensate for. The fact that, well, you're fighting enemies and you're fighting more enemies with more of like a puzzle. Uh, you know, and I don't want to do too many spoilers, and that's kind of like why I have um, unrelated um, Terraria gameplay in the background. Uh, you know, I don't want to give spoilers about uh, the map as of yet. But, you know, there's certain places where I consider puzzles to be appropriate, and as far as them making sense for gameplay and to, you know, try to stay true to Dark Souls more as close as I possibly can, um, it's not a whole ton of places, like, it's about several, and that kind of seems fine, but I wanted to make as true to the lore Dark Souls map as possible, like, that includes all of the prepare to die content and as many of the weapons and character storylines as I possibly can uh, add to it um, without, you know, being too heavy handed or uh, distracting too much from, you know, just the enjoyment of the map. So, I, I don't know, it's just been a really tough balancing act and, you know, for now I just kind of um, put it on hold. Uh, I will start working on it again. Um, but it's just, I need to kind of figure out which direction I want to go in because, um, when I, when I was working on it last, um, I was really unhappy with how a lot of stuff turned out and I don't want to be, you know, cause I mean, building an area in Terraria is not necessarily difficult. It's just time consuming and I don't want to build really um, elegant structures just to have to tear them down and rebuild them again because sometimes you have a really good idea and like you don't add everything that you added the first time or you might not get it um, you know as perfect as you got it the first time that you did it which is something that I've experienced already and I don't want to repeat that now, if you could, uh, you know, like with some some programs that I've been using, you can cut and paste things, but they're not perfect programs. So, um, a lot of times you'll run into errors, and um, I don't know, like a, a bunch of weird stuff can happen, like uh, with door placements and break placements and stuff like that that you have to go back and um, fix. So. You know, I'm not really complaining. Um, you know, it's just that it's it's kind of it's not more difficult than I thought it would be because before I even started working on the map, I kind of knew that I would run into certain problems. And before I even decided it was a project that I wanted to go forward with, I took all of that into consideration. Uh, I guess my main worry is that. Um, I didn't, I kind of underestimated how difficult it would be for, to make the map actually fun, you know, like, I think I was more kind of focused on, well, yeah, I can do references to, you know, certain parts of, uh, the actual game and it would make sense here and people who played Dark Souls would be like, oh, wow, okay, I get it. And people who probably never played it before, they would still get an enjoyable experience because uh, the world was so well designed. The flip side, though, is will it be fun? 
you know and that's kind of where I'm running into issues it's like I want I want the map to actually be enjoyable to play through and so yeah that's kind of the difficulty that I've run into uh, you know I won't I won't go on and on about it I just wanted to uh, guess uh, give everyone an update on uh, who you know is interested in the Terraria Souls um, uh, adventure map uh, kind of give them an update on the progress that I've made uh, with that so far okay so now that that is out of the way um, I want to kind of discuss the future of Terraria content that uh, will likely appear on my channel uh, and of course like as I discussed before um, the limitations with my uh, PC didn't allow me to do certain projects that I was interested in because Terraria Souls was kind of just like one uh, one aspect of Terraria that I wanted to uh, showcase on my channel uh, because you know anybody who plays Terraria knows that Terraria is capable of a lot of cool stuff you know I wanted to do playthroughs and all of that now my plan for playthroughs were also kind of Dark, Dark Souls influenced uh, and I didn't have the um, resources to do it at the time but you know some of the ideas were like doing stuff similar to like an invasion where I would come in um, as sort of like a red phantom quote unquote and uh, invade you know players and it would probably be something like a three on one and do some PvP and stuff like that uh, you know because there's servers and stuff around you know, in the Darks, I'm sorry, I say Dark Souls, but the Terraria uh, game worlds, you know, that kind of have servers and stuff like that. So that was one of my few ideas, is to, like, you know, go around as an invader and attack hosts of uh, the world and stuff like that. Uh, and do, uh, I guess, weapon showcases and stuff. Because I I've always said this before, um, this will probably be the first time um, that it's heard publicly. But I've always said that Terraria was a poor man's Dark Souls. And when I said that, it's because um, when I first started playing Terraria, I noticed the similarities between uh, the two games, uh, Dark Souls and Terraria, almost immediately. Um, you know, some of them being uh, the postmark or the symbolic nature of like dying in the game. Uh, and like in Dark Souls, it was just that you left a blood puddle and sort of like an echo of your previous life that other players could view. Uh, and in Terraria, it was more of a tombstone uh, for other players to view. And they kind of mechanically work the same. Now, this is this is the interesting thing now. In something like a an adventure map, and this is where adventure maps get really cool for me but I don't think it's quite been done yet to the extent that it could be done so say you have a really difficult adventure map and I mean difficult as in good you know challenge and you notice in a specific area that there's a lot of tombstones uh, and you might be wondering well what what's up with this area that there's all these tombstones lying around and it would be you know similar to Dark Souls and you would be able to read it and it would kind of tell you how the person died uh, which would be similar to uh, Dark Souls now and Terraria is a little bit more detailed uh, you know depending on the random message that you get but that's just one of the examples of the similarities between the two games uh, that I noticed almost immediately that's never really been taken advantage of, uh, um, and you know I don't, I don't have any criticism about why that is or anything. But I just thought it would be interesting to kind of give life to an older game. Whereas uh, I can't say that Terraria is near the end of its life, where people aren't really interested in the game. But I do believe that there is space for more unique content and to bring in a newer audience. And uh, I felt as though Terraria Souls would be that entry point, but I wasn't going to stop there. So the content on my channel having to do with Terraria was going to be a little uh, unique. 
and really heavily Dark Souls influenced. Uh, some other ideas I had uh, were more so like challenge runs and stuff like that, which I don't want to spoil. Um, that'll be something that will, you know, come up on the channel when I have the appropriate equipment to kind of do some of the cool stuff that I want to do. But lots of challenge runs. Like, I really like doing challenge runs in Terraria, uh, and I've never been able to showcase the type of challenge runs I like to do. Uh, so that'll be uh, another interesting thing that uh, people who are interested in the Terraria content on this channel can look forward to. Uh, also, uh, with the the weapons and things like that, as far as Terraria is concerned, uh, there's like really rare weapons and stuff that were added in the uh, the 1.3 updates. Um, I'm 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 familiar with Terraria, but some of the newer and I guess some of the older mechanics that kind of got a touch up I'm not familiar with a lot of things uh, I came into Terraria in a rather strange way so even though I've beaten you know technically beaten the game where I have almost all the achievements um, there's some fundamental stuff about the game that I, I'm absolutely ignorant to so um, I'm not sure how interesting it would be for someone who knows everything about everything about Terraria already, but um, I can't say for certain whether it would, like a person like that who knows everything would find interest in someone like me who doesn't know certain things exist or how to even go about doing them. So that's another thing that I guess a person who may be kind of seen and done everything in Terraria might be interested in. Uh, you know, aside from the Dark Souls influence content that I plan on uploading, uploading I'm sorry, uh, once I get my, uh, you know, PC issue uh, fixed. Okay, so with most of that stuff out of the way, the important things about future of this channel with uh, Terraria content, uh, yeah, I kind of want to discuss the similarities between this game and Dark Souls a little bit more. Uh, for anyone who's still listening, because, you know, for the most part, uh, the announcement update type stuff having to do with Terraria content is kind of done. Like, I don't want to speak too much on it and spoil it. Uh, I want there to be some surprises, but I did want uh, people who were interested in that specific content on my channel to uh, know what was going on. Uh, but, uh, so this is more like just... Uh, fun facts type stuff. Like it's nothing really uh, important. So, yeah, again, I've always called Terraria the poor man's Dark Souls. And, of course, I explained the whole tombstone thing, which I think hasn't really been taken advantage of quite yet. Uh, but, uh, another similar aspect of, like, the boss engagement and the mercilessness of the enemies when you go to a certain place unprepared. Now, I, I kind of feel as though the 1.3 update and the option to go to an expert mode map really bring that truth to light a little bit more. Um, and of course some tweaks um, to exploits and stuff that used to exist in the game prior to the updates. But, uh, one of the things I noticed was that in some areas, um, really difficult and challenging enemies seem to appear a little bit more regularly, um, and it's it's unapologetic about it. Whereas if you go to an area unprepared, the um, you know the game has no uh, sympathy for you know completely like smashing your face in, and. Well, going to an expert mode map and being kind of ignorant to a lot of the base mechanics of uh, how Terraria works, um, I completely missed that. And I, I think, and this is what's fun, is that because I started becoming a little familiar, like again, I still don't know everything, but because I started becoming a little bit more familiar with those type of mechanics, when an expert mode map was uh, a thing that you could actually start you know doing or are playing in because it wasn't there before the update I feel as though I got uh, the experience that a newer player would get if they decided well let's just turn up the difficulty without even playing the game through on normal mode or normal mode first in addition to my opinions that I had about Terraria already 
So it was a really good experience for me, and I really felt challenged. Um, and um, I would even go as far to say that it was dif more difficult than Dark Souls at times. Like, I believe that under the right circumstances, Terraria can be way more difficult than any type of Dark Souls game that you can think of. Um, you know, especially playing by yourself. Uh, now, there's ways to circumvent it, you know, um, with any you know, type of game. Like, you can circumvent certain stuff in Dark Souls if you had the right equipment. But I feel as though going in unprepared has the same principal values of a Dark Souls game in Terraria, whereas it, the game teaches you the mistakes that you're making. Um, and a lot of times, the mistakes are something as simple as, well, maybe you should equip this item, or maybe you should uh, ensure that you have this or that advantage before you engage this boss. Um, and then what you notice when you start taking advantage of your options that you, you, you've you had from the beginning, but you might kind of be ignorant to the boss because, like, I, A, you've never fought them before, or B, maybe you fought them before, but just not on expert mode, you know, where there's a lot of changes uh, from how bosses engage the player on, on uh, expert mode, that, like, it's really different. But those... Ig uh, the certain things that you don't know or that ignorance uh, allows room for the game to teach you like hey maybe you should do this or maybe you should take advantage of uh, an item either you know exists or you know the uh, tried and true maybe you should come back to this area later uh, type of teaching uh, mechanic but either way Terraria does that very well especially with um, how I felt about the game going through it on an expert mode, uh, excuse me, and, uh, on an expert mode map where I knew certain things about the game, but I didn't have a uh, beginner's game fundamentals. And, and I guess I can, here I can kind of explain uh, why that is, because, you know, I got all the important stuff out of the way. So, fun fact, so when I came into Terraria, um, I didn't do your typical um, humble beginnings let's play. Uh, I played with some friends and some veterans who already had beaten the game maybe twice or ten times over. And the initial challenge for me was hard mode. Now, I went into a hard mode map. Um, thinking that that was just how Terraria was like I had no idea that hard mode was a thing and so as I traveled from world to world because I was doing a lot of online play uh, I didn't understand why some worlds were a lot more tame than others and you know I started making assumptions about the game that were completely wrong but I, I simply assumed that you know, in the worlds that had hard mode enemies like werewolves and all of that, where these enemies could kill you in like one hit, and they were really fast and aggressive, and you were really uh, underpowered. I assumed that that's something that happened when the corruption got out of control, and you didn't take care of that. You know, and the, the mechanic doesn't work anything like that, but I was under that assumption. And so I would go to a hard mode world and I would slowly try to progress and explore and I would get punished uh, so harshly. And I thought this was normal. I was just like, oh man, like you really can't go in certain places. So I started uh, gathering equipment and drops from enemies in this, these hard mode worlds the same way you would in a Dark Souls game. And my character's power started to increase. Now, as I traveled from world to world, uh, other players were doing playthroughs and they had extra items and equipment and kind of knew the direction I wanted to take my character in. So whenever they found little trinkets or items, we would trade. So my character kind of got their power boost in a, a little bit of a, um, a very specific and unconventional way. And my, com my view on the game was completely like... Uh, 
it was very unique. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad that I had that experience because playing through the game now, uh, from humble beginnings, like having to understand why certain NPCs appear, what it is that you have to do to get certain, uh, items and weapons rather than just having them, uh, hand it to you really gives you a sense of accomplishment and achievement because I had no idea what a lot of the people who were giving me these items had to go through to get them so it, it was a really interesting experience and I kind of want to share that the best I can uh, with uh, the viewers who are interested in the Terraria content because I have a rather unique view on this game because of how I came into it um, I got a lot of history of some interesting things that have happened like uh, for example my character having uh, five hearts I believe whatever the uh, starting amount of health that you have in the game I had that for quite a while with a bunch of hard mode spells and uh, and, uh, and items not not um, completely decked out with them but you know just a good amount and having five heart uh, five hearts and a complete set of hollowed armor and thinking that was completely normal and not knowing about uh, heart containers per se or where it is that you get them uh, and then slowly uh, growing my health up uh, by adventuring with friends it, it was a really unique and interesting experience um, that I don't think that can be repeated and I'm so glad to have had that experience and I kind of want to share my point of view of Terraria with uh, anyone who's interested in that specific type of content on my channel. So yeah, I guess that was a chance for me to kind of share my unique perspective. But anyhow, um, I won't bla uh, babble on and on about it, but anyhow, this has been Inconsequential Gaming and I hope you look forward to the Terraria content that'll be on my channel in the future. Uh, and if you enjoy, uh, you know, the content, you know, I don't know, feel free to subscribe, but, uh, I hope to see you next time.